Hey guys, Brian Pangolini here, owner of Sabre Jiu-Jitsu again, and we're here to talk about that last level, uh, the black belt. Okay, so, you know, it's somewhat cliche, people always say oh, it was the white belt that never gave up. It is, it's very true, but at the same time, there's levels of growth that I talked about at the, about, at the brown belt level that finally you've reached that black belt, and I remember distinctly when I got my black belt. It was like this huge epiphany almost to where I'm like, wow, I see things different. I understand things different on that level to where like things that I was taught as let's say a white belt and a blue belt, I started to put it back in my head. I want to go through that movement again because I bet you I'll have an, a, different, a different interpretation of how that movement is done. Not to mention when I put that movement to work in regards to live rolling or teaching it, all of a sudden it will become a lot more clear. Um, not only that, but then you start to explore uh, um, verbal cues uh, when teaching because you understand body mechanics a bit better and maybe you've been teaching for a while because sometimes uh, schools will have uh, students teaching as far back as purple belts and it's that growth process once again so here you are at a black belt level and aside from the respect that your you know students on the mat will have for you and you'll feel like that level of not necessarily power, but like, wow, you know, I have a huge responsibility on my chest here that I need to live up to. And sometimes people have uh, problems with that and they'll crack to that pressure and they, they either don't deal with it well on the mat on a day to day basis because they feel like they have to be the best um, or even on a, a instructor level to where they're just kind of like, oh, well, you know, uh, this is the way I do it. But, you know, there's not much idea, philosophy, or even belief behind the movements, and you'll see black belts kind of fall short sometimes. And then on the competitor side, this is a whole other animal, and that's why it's like when I was competing as far back as white belt, and then blue belt, and then purple, and brown, you're like, wow, that was great, those were great years, but then I started competing at black belt, man, that was a completely different situation and, and, and like feeling as far as jumping out there. And aside from that, like, here I am, oh, wow, I'm competing as a black belt. But black belts com completely compete different, in my opinion. And you feel that difference, and you see that difference. And sometimes you find yourself in situations where you're like, wow, I'm competing against this person at black belt. Okay, I remember that person years back when I was a lower belt. And it's funny because I remember the 2013 Worlds, I think it was, um, I was in the semifinals with uh, a very high level world champion black belt. One that was already a world champion black belt when I was a white belt. So here I am at full circle. I'm fighting a guy that I completely adored and admired and, and followed his career and all of a sudden I'm competing against him. And we went at it and it, it, was, it was a two to two tie and it was just amazing because he ended up winning the, the uh, uh, um, referee's decision on that match but he came up to me afterwards. He's like, Brian, you were amazing athlete and, and like I was completely worried about you and scared you know to fight you and not only that but he was just like you won that match and that was like wow like that person that guy that I idolized just told me all those wonderful things and here we are he's like my you know at, we're at the same level now and that to me was very very like awe-inspiring to where I was like man I, I love this I love where I was at so you become a, a lot more in in my opinion, enthusiastic about competing at when you're a black belt because you see differences and levels of it. Like I remember I did uh, a tournament uh, not long ago um, and the guy was like, I wanna say a fourth or a fourth degree black belt. And if you put the years together <laughs> based on the degrees, that's almost a black belt longer than I've been training. So like, like I said, you run into people that have been doing this at a long period of time and they're still at it in the game. You can have, you can have nothing but respect for that person. But at the same time, like I, I, don't, I don't ever see myself as different than anybody else just because I got my black belt. And here I am uh, going on my ninth year, almost at my third degree from my black belt. And it's like, I'm just, a, I'm just another guy in the room. I'm just another person on the mat. Um, I not any better than the next person. I just have maybe a larger skill set. I just have a better understanding of movement and position and technique. 
and I have more experience as far as, you know, being out there and, and being exposed to these things. So again, this is where that uh, level of responsibility falls in the lap of the black belt. And like I said, you, you start to really see how someone responds to that. And I saw it within myself, how I responded to that. And I continue to seek growth and I, I still do. Like I still take private lessons from my instructor. I still take tips and instruction from other black belts that I know that have been doing it longer than me. And it's, it's just like anything else in life to where you, you find yourself at a level of maturity or growth or, or status. That doesn't mean you stop. It means you keep seeking more knowledge. You keep growing from that level because you can never stop evolving. And, and, and in my opinion, by the time I got to my black belt, I found myself almost at full circle to where I'm like, wow, I'm teaching at the highest level that I can now as, as, a, as basically a jiu-jitsu student, but I'm seen more now as you know a, a leader. And I had to accept that role full hard, full heartedly and, and wanted to like see myself grow more from it. So that's why if you get to that point, keep going at it treat it like what they say don't be that be that be that white belt that never gave up you know and get yourself on the mat get yourself in the room immerse yourself even greater and even deeper and don't stop seeking knowledge like you know that's one thing again it's almost a pet peeve that i have where i see black belts like not wanting to go like go to their teacher's class or not wanting to get better or or you know you, you just you can't stay stagnant and you have to find uh, ways to increase your knowledge in the game. And on other levels, I see it as we're here serving the community and, and serving uh, um, people to learn the art that we've been doing. I, I've been in Jiu-Jitsu now for almost uh, 17, 18 years now. And it's like one of those things where I'm like, wow, if I can do more based off of what Jiu-Jitsu has provided me as a platform, then I'm gonna make sure I do it for the rest of my community. So if I can give back, I'm gonna give back. I'm gonna find ways of using jujitsu as my platform to reach out to others that need my help on any kind of level, then I'm gonna do so. So, you know, it's not necessarily a political position, but it's like one that re it requires that level of responsibility that I was talking about. So just think to yourself, use the belt as a stepping stone for greater things more knowledge in the art and the sport, but also how you can help your community out. And your people around you and your, your, your peers and, your, and even your students and pupils and whatnot will take that and, and, and grow from that as well. And I think that here on our team, we've, we've done a great job of that over the years. Whereas now I have students taking roles on their own time and they're on, on their own, uh, even on their own dollar sometimes. And, They've told me, like, Coach, I did this because you did this. I did this because I saw you, the example that you led. So, again, I, I, I just I think that's a great thing. And it was never about me. It was about other people. And it was never about uh, of just wanting, you know, one thing out of this sport or this art. It was about making sure that I took everything I got from it and I gave it right back. So, anyway, hope that made sense. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again.